Hello knitters, Barbara Benson here. I am an independent knitwear designer who also likes to make videos here on my YouTube channel, Watch Barbara Knit. Make sure to check in the description notes below the video for information on anything I discuss in this video and how to keep up with my online shenanigans. Today we have for you a Swatch Lab. <laughs> Swatch Lab is where I take a new to me yarn, a yarn that I am unfamiliar with, and put it through its paces to see what it likes, what it doesn't like, and how it might actually knit up, and then share those findings with you so you can have a better idea if this is a yarn that you want to create something with whether you knit, crochet, weave, whatever, it's all about yarn. Today, we have one of the yarns that I purchased while I was in Switzerland, and it is Nepal, Ooh, focus, there we go, gotta put it on my face. It is Nepal from Pasquale, and it is cotton, linen, and nettle. Three plant fibers. You're going to hear the word plant fiber a lot over the next 15 to 20 minutes. Here's what the sample came out looking like, but you will get more information in depth looking close up at my hands. I just finished this swatch and I am going to be blocking it shortly, but I wanted to take a quick sh video here for a baseline so y'all can see what it looks like before blocking. Uh, let's do a little quick measuring. You can see what's going on here. I'm in the, without stretching at all, it's five-ish inches at the bottom where the cable pulls it in. It's a little bit less. And when the lace flares out, it's a little bit more. To this point, we've got around six-ish here, around five-ish there, around five-ish there. So that is what we are looking at before blocking. You can see what's going on here in the cables. The lace is a little bunched up. Let's flip it over. This is what the back looks like. So it's gonna go for its bath. The swatch is blocked. It's completely dry. What I did is I soaked it in lukewarm water and a little bit of wool wash for 20 minutes. And normally I'm super gentle when I do that, but this time because of the fiber content here, I kind of put it in and I did a bit of this bit and squished it around and abused it a little bit. Ideally, if I were going to make a garment that was going in the washing machine, I would have thrown it in the washing machine, but I knew y'all wanted to see it. And I wanted y'all to see this stage. So this is pinned, completely dried. You can see I did wires and pins, but no wires on this end because I wanted to get the lace to this fun curve and point. Now, we just looked at the measurements and let's look at what I blocked it to. So this is five and a half. Up here, we're at six. Here, again, it flared out because we're going up to this lace. I tried to, when it was wet, like bunch this up a bit. This is a little overblocked for cables. Our length here is eight and a half. That's what I blocked it to. But what I'm doing here is I wanted y'all to see at the same time I do what happens when we pull the pins because it's going to tell us a little bit about the memory and how this is going to hold its block. So first thing I'm going to do is pull out these wires. Zoop. Mm, didn't do much of anything. Zoop. And zoop. It stayed pretty stable, but there's still pins in it, of course. What we are looking for is if the fabric contracts, if it pulls back when we pull the pins, that'll tell us if the memory, the memory of the fiber is fighting the block. This is all plant fibers. I seriously doubt it's going to happen. Come on, duck. But we're going to find out. So I'm going to stick Mr. Duck up here. Let's start pulling pins. 
<laughs> you see how it completely stayed? Very little bit of relaxing. Yeah. This is doing exactly what I thought it would do. It is a plant, they are plant fibers. So they are not going to try to pull back. You do the same thing with wall, wool and even more with wool with nylon in it. It's gonna pull back some if you tried to push it beyond what it wanted to be. So I'm gonna put my lid on my pin so I don't stab myself. As you see, I had to lift my camera up because of how big this swatch got. So you've got a little bit of extra down here that, and, but now we can shift over because it's unpinned. Now, this is, look at this, stiff. Look how stiff that is. This is linen. The very first thing I do Whenever I pull something off of the blocking pins like this, I mean, look how stiff that is. Oh, this is, okay. Pointer duck is still here for emotional support because some of y'all might get twitchy when I do this. The first thing I do is this. Now, you don't wanna rub it much if it's wool, but since this is a plant fiber, I'm gonna break it down a little bit. And now you can see we have drape. See, if I had run this through the washing machine, it probably wouldn't be as stiff as it was initially. But now we've got something that has drape, which is pretty cool. And of course it's not as crisp as it was. And that's interesting. It pulled back in here a little bit. That is interesting to see. That might have been my blocking. Now, now that I've crumpled it up a bit, let's see where we are size-wise. And the thing is, is I didn't write down what I had previously, but y'all are watching, so hopefully you're paying attention. So we're still at five and a half here. This, you can see the cables. I feel like that pulled in a bit, because I think that was at six-ish. And up here we're at six, yeah. So previously this was close to the same but this and this, but this pulled in. Height wise, we're looking at seven and a half. If you are working on a garment, you wanna make sure you measure your gauge after the crumple time, <laughs> okay? Because you're gonna wear this. If you measure it as you saw straight off the pins without moving anything, you might not get an accurate measurement. So here is the swatch and let's talk a little bit. I've mentioned plant fibers several times. This is Nepal. It is a cotton, linen, and nettle blend. It is from this Italian manufacturer, Pasquale, I believe. You can see it is 100% organic cotton, the cotton content. Um, it says Pas Pasquale Nepal possesses special properties. Its blend of cotton and linen lets your skin breathe with ease. Its nettle fiber composition provides your craft with a fine shine and soft grip. Uh, it is particularly well suited for garments worn directly on the skin and is extremely durable. The composition over here is 60% cotton. 28% linen and 12% nettle. We have 197 yards in 50 grams. They are smaller skeins. This is telling us to hand wash it. So it's probably good I didn't put it in a washing machine. So they're saying, regardless of what I say, in theory, this I think could go in the washing machine, but always follow the instructions on your label. So this is saying hand wash. Um, they're recommending a uh, US size three to six, and I, I'm not gonna mess with the gauge. So, and this is color six. Here is what it looks like here. I'm gonna move this so we can get a good look at the yarn. This is what it looks like wound up in the skein. This is what the individual strand looks like. You can see that it is a two ply yarn, but it is an uneven 
two ply as you can see okay so what I'm doing with my fingers is I'm rolling my left hand away from me and rolling my right fingers towards me to unspiral and see how easily that came apart that has a lot to do with it being a plant fiber this is a fairly loose ply and it's not a, a tight or an even ply and that is something that is the nature you really need to be aware you can see that some of the plies go through a thick thin action so this isn't like a really really consistent yarn I'm not using consistent as a negative or a positive it's just knowing what you are working with you can see there are areas and in my swatch there are a couple areas uh, and it's not particularly visible when I was knitting it was visible but like right there where you get some super chunk on the they puff up so it does have a thick thin element to it that gives it a really nice uh, rustic it's charming I'm not saying it's a negative it's just to understand what you're working with oh you can see right there see under here see how the it gets a little bigger see how the two plies are bigger there but it is really nice oh we need to do the pull test and when you pull it it pretty much doesn't change size at all so there is really no loft to this it's not really going to bloom when you wash it it and that again all of those are characteristics of plant fibers you can get some cottons if they're spun in a certain way that are going to bloom oh there look here that is a really big thick thin chunk see right there see how fat the uh that one ply gets so you've got this ply over here that's really skinny and this ply that's floofed out that is probably cotton doing that so the different fibers behave in different ways okay let's look at our swatch I zoomed in a little bit so we can get a better look at our swatch pointer duck is here for assistance as usual in my swatchy swatch I do lace I create fabric on a bias so we can see how it behaves I do a little bit of stockinette I do a little bit of texture I do some cables and then I do some lace that is knit two together yarn over on both sides so it is true lace so that you can see how it performs in each of these things this is what the back side looks like you've got reverse stockinette obviously this is a fully reversible this is moss stitch so you can see so the reason I did this on a size 4 needle and the reason I chose that is I went on Ravelry and searched the hundred projects that are done in this yarn and a four was the most common size used for this it was just an easy way obviously if you go to a smaller needle you're going to close it up a bit and if you go to a larger needle it's going to be more open honestly i feel like this is pretty darn open as it is i don't know that i would go up much unless i was looking for something super lacy you can see here in this bias the areas where you get thick thin are fairly visible the other thing you can really see here is and it's interesting it doesn't show up as much in the stockinette as it does in the bias that is really interesting that these two separate plies are fairly visible so that really you need to take that into consideration that it is bringing that extra visual texture which is interesting it has held the lace very nicely and honestly that is what I expected uh, all of these plant fibers do well in lace just lovely but again here you can see that thick thin going on so that is going to give if you're the kind of person who wants their lace to look just so this thick thin may not make you happy but I think it gives it a really it gives it a more casual look to me the stockinette looks really nice but again this is a a the blend the the fiber blend of it with the linen and the cotton and apparently the nettle you are gonna see every tension issue 
This has been blocked, but you can still see the differences in sizes. That is just the nature of this type of plant fiber. You're going to see every tension issue you had. It doesn't puff, it doesn't fill in the way that a fuzzier animal fiber will, but it's not a drawback. It's just something to know. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. There is a nice shine and the label says that is from the nettle, which is really interesting. Oopsie, there's another thick thin action going on. Um, I think that the shine from the nettle gives you a little bit the texture since it's going to reflect the light differently. But since the stitch definition is so good, I don't know that this kind of uh, knit pearl texture is really bringing that much to the party versus just doing straight stockinette. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's not wowing me. Here we go with our cables. The cables, I always do one over ones and then two over twos. This is not gonna be a big poppy cable. Uh, if you look from the side, it's pretty flat. That's the nature of this fiber. Definitely, if I was going to do cables, I would go down a needle size or two to tighten up these pearl ditches in between. And you can see this, you can really see where I said that this type of fiber is going to show all of your stitch tension uh, inconsistencies. Even after blocking, you can see where it, it blew out, but this is the wrong side. So and these very rarely look neat, <laughs> but it looks great from the right side. I, I gotta say, as usual, I like the two, two over twos better than the one over ones. They have a lot more presence. Uh, this one, if you notice, so this one, I did the cross, a pearl row, and then two knit rows before I crossed again. This one is like squinched. So this is a cross and a pearl row and then across. So I kind of like it squinched better. Usually it's good to leave space, but this really bulked it out. And I think I like crossing every right side row. It's kind of nice. Or maybe I didn't. I think I did. <laughs> it's hard to tell what I did. So there's the cross and there's the pearl. I don't know. I think it looks pretty cool. Yeah, because this one is definitely taller than that one but it definitely is worth doing. I definitely wouldn't do like some fancy Aaron Fisherman sweater in this. This is not because one thing you're gonna get into is with the plant fiber, since it doesn't have the memory to pull back. You saw when I released it, how it pulled back to hold its shape. If you do a heavier garment, right? With a whole bunch of cables, the simple weight of this is going to over time as you wear it, cause it to pull down. Now, I think what they're saying here about the nettle fiber provides fine shine and a soft grip. I think the nettle might be fighting that a little bit and it might be better than just doing it in straight cotton, but it definitely, um, it, it's gonna be heavier if you do a super heavily cabled piece, but small detail cables seem to be really nice. And here's the lace. It's not holding the lace out super fine, um, but it looks nice, definitely worth doing. The mesh is a little inconsistent because of our aforementioned thick, thin action that's going on. It's not gonna be like, a, like right here. See right here where the beak is pointing? It's not, it's gonna be a little bit more irregular. Irregular is a good word than with a finer, a more consistent yarn, but it looks lovely. I definitely think any of these are viable cables as like accents and details, but not an all over cabled garment. The texture is gonna cause the reflection. I wouldn't get into anything particularly intricate with that, but all in all, I think it is absolutely a lovely piece. I just realized I hadn't mentioned this is a fingering. <laughs> It is a fingering weight yarn. Uh, I think it would make a lovely lightweight shawl, but I don't know that I would go to like a really 
big shawl with this, again, the weight of it might pull itself and distort itself out, but a smaller shawl, a really nice scarf would be great. It, it definitely would make a beautiful garment uh, to wear. Um, could even be a fun skirt, who knows? So that is the Swatch Lab for Nepal Cotton Linen Nettle Blend. I hope you enjoyed this video and it was informative and gave you the information you needed to decide if this is a yarn you want to investigate for one of your projects. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, click that like button. And if you would like to be notified whenever I upload a new video, please subscribe to my channel and select notifications. Thank you so much.